Welcome to the Clark County Today Weekly News Podcast, your source for the top news stories in Clark County, Washington. This week, we have a lineup of stories that capture the pulse of our community. Let's dive right in. Evergreen High School and Cascade Middle School in Vancouver were placed on lockdown due to a concerning incident in the neighborhood. The lockdown was initiated in response to a 911 call reporting gunshots in the area. The Vancouver Police Department swiftly arrived on the scene and authorities detained one individual. Thankfully, there have been no reports of injuries. Both schools acted swiftly to ensure the safety of their students. A 16-year-old suspect was apprehended following the incident near Evergreen High School and Cascade Middle School. The suspect, who is not a student at Evergreen High School, was taken into custody without incident. He now faces multiple charges, including unlawful possession of a firearm, discharge of a firearm, and assault I, two counts, with additional charges pending. The Vancouver Police Department's Crime Reduction Unit is actively investigating the case. The FEC has concluded its investigation into employment-related accusations against Joe Kent, finding no evidence that he or his campaign violated any laws by accepting corporate contributions through salary payments from his employer or in the form of payments for polling. Ron Fredrickson, the chairman and CEO of RSV Solutions, has expressed his concerns about Vancouver's Safe Stay 3 temporary homeless shelter project. Fredrickson suggests that taxpayer funds could potentially support more people by renting apartments at market rates. He also proposes considering the creation of large emergency relief centers as an alternative to address the growing homeless crisis. This week's poll, Are Vancouver's Safe Stay Communities an Efficient Use of Funding to Address Homelessness? Visit ClarkCountyToday.com now to make your voice heard. Share your opinion on the efficiency of Vancouver's Safe Stay Communities in addressing homelessness. Washington State's transportation system is facing financial challenges, as officials acknowledge a $275 million funding gap for road and bridge maintenance. The Washington State Transportation Commission is considering significant toll rate increases, including an 80% hike on the I-405-SR-167 tolling system. These measures are partially due to decreased tolling revenues during the pandemic and the need for additional funds to maintain the state's extensive highway network. The challenge of maintaining adequate speeds in express toll lanes and the complexities of toll collection efficiency are also prominent issues. Additionally, the impact of Washington's high gas taxes and the carbon tax on transportation funding is noted. As the state grapples with these financial concerns, there is hope that federal funding from the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act will provide relief, but the use of these funds is a subject of debate. Area residents in Clark County, Washington have one last chance to register for the Great Northwest Awakening event happening on Saturday, October 21. The event promises to be a day of unity and real solutions for the community. Register for tickets at www.patriotsunitedwa.com. Law Center High School in Clark County, Washington, pulled off a heartwarming surprise during Pink Night, a cancer research fundraiser. Donations were collected for the Pink Lemonade Project, with the Booster Club matching the contributions. The League of Women Voters of Clark County, in collaboration with the Fort Vancouver Regional Library, is hosting a community conversation titled, Does Local News Even Matter? This event aims to address the local news crisis and its impact on the community. Former Wells Fargo bank manager, Brian Davey, pleaded guilty in federal court for embezzling over $1.28 million from vulnerable customers. Davey faces a recommended four-year prison term, with restitution to be determined during sentencing on January 2, as per federal authorities. Clark County Elections is set to mail out ballots to all eligible registered voters in the county starting on October 20. The tabulation of election results will commence at 7.15 p.m. on November 7, with results expected to be posted around 8.15 p.m. on clarkvotes.org. That wraps up this week's episode of the Clark County Today Weekly News Podcast. For more in-depth coverage of these stories and the latest news in Clark County, be sure to visit ClarkCountyToday.com. Thank you for joining us, and stay tuned for next week's episode. Remember, your local news matters.